Welcome again to the podcast. I'm your host, Manal Zainedine. This podcast highlights education communities from macro and micro angles. It's about leadership, learning, personal and professional growth, stories, interviews, talks, projects, and more coming up from around the globe. I always extend through this podcast Plutarch's famous quote, the mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be kindled. ChatGPT was launched in November 2022 by OpenAI and is based on GPT 3.5. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trainer Transformer 3 and it is, it is a language model, an auto-regressive that can communicate using human-made texts. And ChatGPT is an AI language model trained to help users generate texts in the same manner done by humans and based on all the information found on the internet. ChatGPT can give very quick answers to almost any question. And this is the service which users are fascinated with. It can even compose research, essays in a blink of an eye. Businesses and creative fields such as pedagogy found this fascinating because it has clustered various ways to innovate strategies, techniques, methods, and, and ways to find magical outlets to the long hours of searching and work on your computer. We have seen an increasing number of resources shared by, uh, of resources shared by educators and other professionals from all industries, such as booklets about ChatGPT and videos about ChatGPT. For example, creating prompts, uh, rubrics, feedback, setting goals, analyzers, uh, rigorous vocabulary lists, and even lesson plans and quizzes. We know also that businesses and entrepreneurs are excited about the unfathomable content that they can generate to support and grow their businesses. And even startups, they can generate their business plans in less than a minute. And the AI chatbot can also be built into Excel sheets to help create Excel formulas. And some have even started to use it for trading. Artists, and at least the ones who accept the idea of uh, AI-generated art, or what's also referred to as creative intelligence, and digital designers are creating fancy, colorful images and cartoons using ChatGPT. And we have to admit that curiosity is key to learning. So as users are exploring those new dimensions of these new chatbots, mainly ChatGPT now, they are thinking and learning, whether as regular people or as machine learning engineers doing the uh, prompt engineering. So while some jobs may be lost, we know that many others with these new discoveries will emerge. Now, while there are endless positive features for ChatGPT and any AI chatbot to provide these quick solutions, they do have aspects worth thinking about, worth worrying about. When we answer a prompt in less than a minute, it's definitely appealing to its users. And we know that writing as a school subject and uh, writing in general as a life expressive skill is so important. And when we're using these uh, softwares, these AI softwares, we this will lose or this skill will lose its authenticity, its voice, and may even lose its credibility. Now, the debate whether ChatGPT is an explicit form of plagiarism has, has been on and institutes around the world are still divided whether ChatGPT can be licensed. And there was also a solution to that though, an application designed and released in January 2023 by a computer science graduate, Edward Tien. The app named uh, GPT-0 can scrutinize the texts to ensure that there is zero involvement of AI in them. And this is, this is a good thing. It's like using ChatGPT against itself. And to use Edward Tien's words, I quote, this technology is incredible. I do believe it's the future, but at the same time, it's like we are reopening Pandora's box and we need safeguards to adopt it responsibly. End quote. One serious aspect to reflect on, and I relate to that so much, one of the prompts that many people and educators tested was asking ChatGPT to write children's books in the style of certain authors, and it did wonderfully. 
Another prompt was asking ChatGPT to rank 0 to 10 famous figures in terms of uh, being controversial, uh, in terms of kindness and honesty, and it did. It ranked 5, 9, 10, 8, 7, etc. Now we can ask ourselves here on what basis was this rating done? Is it on how it was, how the AI was trained and supervised, or simply influenced by the social media available all over the internet? Or are they simply random numbers? Another aspect to think about is the fast-paced progress. We are in uh, the era of chatbot wars, as some media refer to. I'd rather refer to it as chatbots race and who gets the most prestigious prize. Uh, we have Google AI la launching, Google as well, launching BARD, another generative language model, language model for dialogue applications or Lambda. And who knows what's next? So. We know that ChatGPT will launch also later this year another advanced version of ChatGPT and both OpenAI and Google are headhunting, searching for programmers and innovators to develop it more. So it is just the beginning. On the official website of OpenAI, OpenAI explains its mission and here I quote, OpenAI's mission is to ensure that artificial intelligence, AGI, by which we mean highly autonomous systems that outperform humans at most economically valuable work, benefits all of humanity, end quote. And here, if we think about the analogy of the calculator, the calculator is defined as a machine for automatically performing arithmetical operations and certain mathematical functions. Now we know that many people who use calculators have forgotten multiplication tables and cannot multiply and divide quickly. We all know that, but it's being used. If we say, for example, that the calculator performs, then Chad GPT, as stated by its inventors, outperforms humans. And if the calculator automatically does the task, then ChatGPT autonomously does the task. And autonomous means independent and having the power to make one's own decisions. And I think this is worth reflecting on. Robots are an extension, and maybe we will need to talk about that in a later episode. So there are many discussion prompts hanging in this huge hologram of AI. Is it okay to have those distilled searches ready at our fingerprints? I think it's not totally wrong to have quick answers from time to time instead of hours of searching, but I also think that we are sacrificing our critical thinking and the value of the searching process. It's the value of the finding. It's the aha moment of the, that discovery. It's the journey. Now, do we know all that we need to know before we get immersed in this AI world? Well, let's face it, no, we don't, because it's progressing at a very radical speed. Are humans welcoming this new age of technology? Definitely, yes, a big yes, because in just five days of its launching, ChatGPT recorded one million users. Is that out of curiosity only, a desire to discover, or is it a desire to ride the AI wave? Well, I think it's a, it's a mix of both. Are these AI tools prone to making errors? Yes, they have. They have been making errors, but definitely they are still put into more testing. Are we respecting the value of research authors and the voice of people? Now, this is only my opinion. I respect yours too. Probably you share the same opinion, but I think no, we are not. We are taking the huge efforts of these researchers, we are taking the tone and the voice of others just within a matter of minutes and, and making all this content. What makes our world exciting and special is the uniqueness of everyone's voice used by that person only. So it is meaningless just to copy it. Humans can always adapt. Can we adapt well this time with more gain and, and less losses? Now oh, this is going to be a vigorous test. And I'm saving the best discussion prompt for last. Don't you think that while these chatbots are open free for the public now and people are exuberantly testing them, aren't we actually training them? Isn't it like a pilot project that's being developed rapidly and by the masses at the same time that it's being explored? I think let's imagine the result of all that. I think while we benefit from this new form of technology because it is helpful, we need to have awareness sessions or discussions with ourselves and mainly with the children and adolescents, at least to discuss how to use these tools safely, when to accept and when to reject, how to set boundaries. 
I want to thank you all for listening and it would be great to share your thoughts on this as well. And ending with the open-ended question for all of us to ponder and this time they have to be three questions. This is such a challenging topic. Are these AI tools time savers, life savers or life threats? And to what extent do we know the multi-dimensions of these chatbots? And by infusing our human prompts, aren't we teaching these chatbots to be more human-like?